My tape's on. Tape's on. Okay, good evening, and welcome to the February 20, 2018 business meeting of the Council of the Borough of Ringwood. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed on Channel 77 throughout the week. Kelly, statement of compliance, please. Adequate notice of this business meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Law, PL 1975, Chapter 231, setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of this business meeting by Consent Agenda Resolution Number 2018-14. Adopted January 1st, 2018, through a legal notice published in the Suburban Trends issue of January 7th, 2018, and through notices emailed to the following name newspapers and posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall on January 3rd, 2018, the Suburban Trends, the Bergen Record. Please silence all electronic devices during the meeting. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Can I have a roll call, please? Council Members Bolton? Here. Davison? Here. Ferretti? Here. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Here. Council Members Noonan, Council Members O'Keefe? Here. And Mayor Spear? Here. Uh, also present, Borough Manager, Director, Department of Public Works, Scott Heck, Deputy Borough Manager, Borough Clerk, Kelly Hallowitz, and Borough Attorney, Richard J. Klimak. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First order of business tonight will be a public hearing and possible resolution, uh, number 2018 57, for the 2018 Passaic County Open Space Farmland and Historical Preservation Trust grant application for park development grant uh, for the Ringwood Turf Field Project at Stonetown Recreation Complex. Um, who wants to take that over, Mr. Heck, Mrs. Howitz? Um, I certainly can do that. Uh, Mayor, there were some people that were going to come. Kelly, was that advertised for 8 or 7.30? 7.30. Okay. So I'm surprised that they're not here. If you want me to start, you can do that, or uh, um, you know there are a couple of residents. It's up to you. No, I'm sorry. She did it for 8. 8 o'clock. They were advertised yeah, for 8? I would be surprised that they're not, that they wouldn't okay. be here. Okay, so okay. You very good. Hold this? Very good. We're going we're gonna to hold this then and push this uh, further back into our, into our agenda. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll hold this for now. Okay. So later on in the agenda, uh, next order of business would be the approval of minutes. I need a motion to approve the January 23rd, 2018 business meeting. All were present. I'll move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council members Ferretti. Here. I'm sorry. I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Council member Bolton. Yes. Sorry. Davison. Yes. Ferretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Uh, Council Member O'Keefe. Yes. And Mayor Spear. Yes. I don't know why I do that. Because it's an R, I hey, guess. Terrence. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, next on the agenda would be general public comment. Uh, anybody wishing to uh, address the Mayor and Council, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Robin Kennedy, 310 Lakeview Avenue. Um, I have a question because there's been a lot of press about the 100th anniversary. And I know Ryan had posted something on Facebook um, looking for volunteers, but why did we wait till now? Do we have anything already underway? Because the other towns are already celebrating. Do we have a budget? Did any money get put aside? Was there anything in the works? I feel like we're a little bit late compared to the other two towns. So that's my question. Is there anything that the public should know about? that's already being thought about it's next month isn't it no um, it's the the whole 2018 year is what what, what it's being looked at all right that's the records covered it quite a bit mm -hmm. and we're not in it mm -hmm. <clears throat> see no one going to close public I'll second. Uh, roll call to close public mm -hmm. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council member O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Uh, there being no old business and no new business, uh, we'll move right on to resolutions. Thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, resolution 2018-58, uh, whereas the Chief Financial Officer has certified their funds available for the payment of the current bill list in the amount of $393,177.65, supplemental payments in the amount of $6,701,828.19, merchant services fees in the amount of $129.68 to be credited to the following listed accounts for a total of $7,095,135.52 of which the Ringwood Board of Education is uh, receiving $1,889,345, Lakeland is receiving $1,030,452, and Passaic County is uh, receiving $3,023,205. Any questions on the bill list? Uh, just, I noticed that there was a lot of uh, sports-related expenses, so I'm assuming that comes out of the uh, or trust accounts? Yeah, the majority of uh, it's springtime, so the, all the new uniforms and, and whatnot that's coming out of the individual sports comes out of the trust fund, but those bills come through us and we approve those payments, even though it's in a trust fund for <coughs> that particular sport. So it doesn't, most of it doesn't come out of taxpayer dollars, it comes out of user fees. Okay. Also, I noticed there was a large sum <coughs> paid to the Green Mountain Tree um, for operational supplies. I wasn't sure if that was tree work it's or tree if work. it's just. Uh, Occasionally, we have trees that are mandatory that have to come down for safety hazards or whatever in the right of way. And unfortunately, Mr. Uh, Troy accumulates his bills for a couple of months, which we yell at him regularly. And that and that's seven <laughs> yeah, months of emergency. Yeah, close to nine thousand. Yeah, yeah, emergency tree work. Uh, emergency were, tree work. Yeah, okay. a lot of them required okay. cranes. A lot of them were were dangerous. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's accumulated over quite a few months. I see. Thank you. Yeah, we don't do any tree work ourselves unless it's something that we can safely take down, especially when it's around wires. Absolutely, so. yeah. Overall, so I know that the um, the bills come in by vendor, yes. alphabetically. Would it be possible to group them by account as well? So alphabetical out of like municipal operating versus water operating? I, I, I could certainly do water operating separate. I don't know, I, I'd have to ask Debbie if she can, how she could sort it uh, with the admins program, uh, but I'll ask her. Don't want to create a lot of extra work, but it just help kind of seeing where everything's coming out of. Yeah, she does it basically by vendor, but we certainly could. I mean, there's a there's a notation where it's coming from, but we certainly could uh, see if we can yeah. sort it differently. Yeah, you could sort it through by, yeah. by the by the account. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a way that we can we can do it, but however you guys want it. Need motion. I'm moved. Seconded. Roll call, please. Council members Bolton. Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Councilmember O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Uh, this is uh, in green on in front of you this evening. This is transfers from the CFO. This is 2018-59. Be resolved the following appropriation transfer be made for the general current account on the financial records of the Borough of Ringwood. Again, this isn't new funds. This is moving funds from one account to a different account within the budget. Um, where you might want to put a little extra funds in case you're, you're running short for one reason or another. And this is from all of 2017. Um, uh, from uh, UCC Building Department Salary and Wages to UCC O&E, $10,000. Buildings and Grounds, OE, to Streets and Roads, OE, 15000 Solid Waste Recycling uh, and Salary and Wages to Solid Waste Recycling, OE, 1000 uh, Fire Prevention, OE, to uh, Length of Service of, of, uh, for our Emergency Services, uh, $3,775 for a total of $29,775. Any discussion? How we? Yes. How, how long do we, uh, I mean, how, how long so after the end I of the I think this is the last year that we'll do, this is the last, last time we'll do transfers. This is the last go, go through for, for transfers, right? Correct. So 2017 budget is kind of closed Complete. out at this point. Complete. Yeah. Very good. Further discussion? Uh, Get a motion. I'll move it. Moved. I'll second. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council member O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Resolution 2018-60, I am going to defer to uh, uh, Kelly because she handles all the liquor licenses. <laughs> okay. Um, this is 2018-60, whereas the Borough of Ringwood received a letter dated January 15, 2018, a copy of which is attached from the Erskine Lake Volunteer Fire Company No. 1, informing the Borough of the Department's desire not to renew their New Jersey ABC liquor license, club license 
uh, number 161131-009-011. Now, therefore, we resolve that the Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood hereby rescinds New Jersey ABC Liquor Club License 161131-009-011, and that said license ceases to exist in the Borough of Ringwood effective immediately. Do they really want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, they've had it such yes. a long time. Yes, they, they really want to do it. Just for the record, uh, Kelly has, uh, has reiterated to them that same question on numerous occasions. <coughs> Their advisor would be on tonight. That would be for the discussion because it's, uh, it's a big act, but it, uh, it, it's clear. So Kelly's gone out of her way to, to con triple confirm that, that uh, they do not want the license. Yeah. Or maybe even more than that, Kelly. Yeah. So, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, you said it ceased to exist in the borough of Ringwood. Mm -hmm. That isn't something that maybe a lake association or somebody else could pick up if they were so interested? No. Okay. No. They could apply. Uh, they can apply, apply for their own. They, they could apply right. for a new one. Right. Okay. Right. right. Thank for their you. Own, but no. But it's nope. not something that could be transferred or sold. No. 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 It, it, under no circumstances. It's a special club license. It's not like a private one, a private liquor store you could buy, sell. These are different uh, types, because uh, these are non-profit. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Right. Do we have a motion? Uh, you have a motion. Any second? I'll second. A second. Uh, roll call, please. Casimir Bolton. Really want to abstain out of principle. <laughs> <laughs> Davison. Yes. Ferretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Councilman Burr O'Keefe. Yes. Mayor Spear. Yes. Uh, resolution 2018-61 is a resolution of support of local governing body authorizing sustainable New Jersey 2018 PSENG Foundation grant application. Uh, Mayor, I would suggest that uh, the, the Councilman O'Keefe or, or Ms. Hallowitz, since they participated in this, I, if they want to read this for the record, I'm certainly it's okay with me. Oh. Do you want me to read it, the whole thing in? I mean, it's, uh, I didn't write it, so if, if you want. Okay. Uh, yes, if you would, please. Go. Sure. This is resolution 2018-61, whereas a sustainable community seeks to optimize quality of life for its residents by ensuring that its environmental, economic, and social objectives are balanced and mutually supportive. And whereas the Borough of Ringwood strives to save tax dollars, assure clean land, air, and water, improving working and living environments. And whereas the Borough of Ringwood is participating in the Sustainable Jersey program. And whereas one of the purposes of Sustainable Jersey program is to provide uh, resources to municipalities to make pro uh, progress on sustainability issues and they have created a grant program called sustainable jersey small grants program now therefore be resolved that the municipal council of the borough of ringwood has determined that the borough should apply for the sustainable sustainable jersey 2018 pseg foundation grant and be it further resolved that the municipal council of the borough of ringwood county of state state of jersey jersey hereby authorizes the borough managers to execute and submit the sustainable jersey 2018 pseg foundation grant on behalf of the borough um I can you want to talk about it and well what I'd like to um, say is that we met for the first time this February 15th the Thursday and we had an amazing group of people uh, it ranged from college age to retirement age but the one common theme of all the participants was the love of our community and the desire to preserve its historic character and to build a sustainable future in fact, I didn't name all the members of the sustainable team at the first meeting when they were all inducted, so to speak. However, um, in lieu of the fact that I might butcher a few names here, because um, I have a tendency to do that, as my daughters would tell you, I would like to thank Tom, Panarfi, Doug, Roussione, LJ, Bartholomew, Ann Zybacker, Janine Graham, Sarah Lennington, Nikki Albino, Carol Gardner, Christine Rifflard, Joan Garcia, Jill Berge, Ellen Ewing, Janice Pevid, Erin Schwab, Kelly, R. Kelly, who was there with us, Joanne Atlas, because all these people have stepped up because they want to be part of an important team to create a great community. They want to work with our schools, existing organizations. If you know any of these people and you want to be involved, reach out to them because one of the things that we want to get going is community recognition and working with all the organizations and 
nonprofits as well as businesses in the community to move forward. The PSE&G grant is a great grant. We just started our first meeting, but PSE&G actually offers $200,000 in sustainable grants. They offer four $20,000 awards, eight $10,000 awards, and 20 $2,000 awards. Since we just launched and we're getting our sea legs underneath us, we're going for the $2,000 grant. However, I also want to thank Kelly for something we all agreed upon at our last, um, during the campaign cycle, which is the bicycle and pedestrian path that we would like to launch here in Ringwood as we come upon the spring and the summer season with most families having two people working we have a lot of our children pedaling and walking to our lake communities and to sports so this is something we want to update and hopefully hopefully the next time this grant comes along we'll be going for the twenty thousand dollar grant to help us implement great plans like this and a special thanks to kelly for placing the bicycle and pedestrian path plan on the municipal website. So if this is something that interests you and you want to get involved, please go to our website, take a look at it. It does need to be updated. There's great information in there. I'm sure there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into this huge volume. And I'd like to see, yes, okay, yeah, there was. So let's move it forward. Let's make it happen. Let's work together as a community to um, make uh, Ringwood more sustainable and a walkable and bicycle place that's safe for everyone. Thank you. So the grant, the grant proposal is really just basically to build support for sustainable Ringwood. Um, the, a small group had met uh, and put t together um, a brief description, which is that the project will seek to inform and educate the residents of Ringwood about the imperatives for planning and building a sustainable future in Ringwood. The key goals will be to expand the volunteer base of support and to identify research and develop action plans, as well as partners and possible funding sources for future projects. Um, again, uh, as Councilman O'Keefe said, that we're just, they really just, one meeting. So, um, that's why the $2,000 grant would be good, just so that they could reach out to the community and let them know who we are. Okay. Uh, did we have a motion? We on, do. On that? We have a motion. <laughs> second. A second. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members O'Keefe? Yes. And Mayor Spear? Yes. Uh, 2018-62, whereas a contract was awarded to DR Mullen Construction Company for the construction of Cupsaw Drive Improvement Project, Phases 6 and 7, contract number 2017-2 on July 18th, 2017, in the amount of $411,926.35. Where Shawana Lee's Halls Engineering has submitted and the borough engineer has reviewed and recommends current estimate number 5 in the amount of $18,741.34 for the work performed in the project. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood hereby approves current estimate number five in the amount of $18,741.34 to DR Mullen Construction Company of Edison Avenue, Oakland, New Jersey. And be it further resolved, this payment, this payment is authorized to be made, has been uh, received the month, New Jersey monthly manning reports and the certified payroll re uh, records as required by the uh, contract specifications. Okay, so it's not going to leave. What's that? With that payment, it's only going to leave. Yeah. It's, it, the project's pretty much complete. There are, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. There are some things that they have to come back and redo, but yes, there's also money held back from bonds and whatnot, so performance bonds. All right, I'll move it. But the project is complete. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. Second, any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Member O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear. Yes. 2018-63, be it resolved the Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood hereby authorize the execution of the attached law enforcement agreement release for Cherry Ridge Range by the Borough Manager and the Chief of Police. Uh, we are going to a, an alternate uh, location for our uh, police uh, uh, shooting. They ha they're required to qualify every couple of months. 
Um, so we are going to a new place that, that the, is not going to charge us anything for it, um, but they require a release from the municipality for that. So Mr. Klimak uh, reviewed the contract, yeah, uh, reviewed the uh, yes, release. I may, uh, yeah, um, uh, what I ask is that if you do approve this subject to attorney approval uh, and further review, uh, I, I got the document. I have some questions about it. I spoke to the captain uh, this morning on it. Uh, as, as the manager said, uh, you know, we are, we are, the department is in need of a shooting range because the officers have to qualify every year. But uh, there are, it's, it's, uh, it's what they call a release and identification agreement. Uh, there, are, there are points in it that I want to discuss with the, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, owners of the shooting range uh, in more detail. So we could do, you could authorize the execution of the document subject to attorney review and approval. Having no other shooting range, this is one that we need to do, and unfortunately our qualifications are due in the not too distant future. And you'll understand more why we don't have a shooting range when we get done with our executive session today. Um, so this is located in Cherry Ridge? In Vernon. In Vernon. Just okay. um, and then there's no cost in terms of use of the range? or they're, they're, uh, they're, They don't charge municipalities for police departments provided that they give them the indemnification clause. Okay. Um, would we then be seeing uh, an increase in just hourly? Yes, costs? It, mm -hmm. the yeah. cost will okay. definitely increase due to uh, they have to get there. Um, they're going to be on, they can't do it while they're on duty. We can't have people qualifying because they're right here in town. So there's definitely going to be expense to the budget to get them there. There are not many alternatives. So, how, how long is the contract for? This is just an identification. There's, we don't have a physical contract yet. This is a, before we can shoot there, we can do that provided that we provide them the insurance That'll be identification. Part of my, uh, discussion. Okay, so we could move if we had another Correct. location and complete the same process. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I uh, move it based on uh, Mr. Klimak's. Uh, As amended by, by Mr. Mm -hmm. Klimak. Uh, Subject to attorney review and approval. Right. <clears throat> Very good. Second that. Motion. We have a second. Um, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Mr. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. The reason that that's here before all of you is I can enter into the contract, but I certainly can't indemnify, I can't sign an indemnification of the borough. You guys have, you as a group have to do that. That's all there is for the uh, resolutions. Very good. Thank you. We're going to consent resolution. Can I introduce uh, a new one, if that's okay? Um, sure. And I know it's not in writing, but it's okay. for the borough historian. So it's it's innocuous, but timely. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we could dust off the um, resolution that we had for the reorganization okay. meeting in terms of the, that language. But we got a um, citizen leadership form from Ralph Colfax, who is the president of the North Jersey Highlands Historical Society. And he's also the chair of the Ringwood Manor Committee within that group. Um, he's, a, he's a lecturer, and I think he's a uh, very, very solid candidate and very happy that he raised his hand during this our, our 100th year. So. Uh, Kelly, what would be the next resolution number? 71. 2018-71? Uh, Correct. Appointment of Mr. Ralph Colfax as Bro Historian for the year 2018. Correct. Um, do, you have a, do you have a motion? I'll make the motion. A and second. I'll second it. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Member O'Keefe? Yes. And Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda, consent agenda resolutions. Uh, Kelly, if you will. Sure. Whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Ringwood has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resolutions on the consent agenda are hereby approved. 2018-64, approval of consent. 2018-65, approval of payroll and payroll transfers for January 2018. 2018-66, authorized redemption tax sale certificate various. 2018-67, authorized municipal lien redemption block 604, lot 3, uh, uh, qualifier C2. 2018-68, professional service payment, construction, inspection, and supervision for the Cupsaw Drive Improvement Project, phases 6 and 7, contract number 2017-2I, in the amount of $9,750. 2018-69, refund uh, Board of Adjustment application fee 
for docket 2025 law for $250 and 2018-70 appointment of member to the Ringwood Sustainable Jersey Green Team. Anyone make a motion on the consent agenda? I'll move it. Yeah. Second. second. I have a second. Um, any discussion? Anybody want to remove any item for further discussion? Roll call, please. Sure. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davidson? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Member O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Uh, since we're still not quite at 8 o'clock, do you want to run through the manager's report? And then we can pick up on our public hearing for the Stone Town Field? It, um, are you holding me to five minutes? Or? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Because that might take a little longer than that. Not at all, um, no. Let's yeah, at any time, Mayor, if you need me to break, um, I can do that. Um, Cupsa Drive Improvement uh, Project Phases 6 and 7. The asphalt thickness and composition testings were done satisfactorily. However, we found that uh, a few roads, or, or one road, that do not meet the requirements of thickness, um, and they're going to be uh, patched and repaved uh, by the contractor, and uh, the final DOT uh, payment will not be made to the contractor until the, the DOT completes their inspe in inspection and, and uh, the contractor completes the punch list items. There are a few items that they have to do. Um, the road that uh, we found that did not have the depth that was appropriate was uh, West Circle. West Circle, there's a few spots where the road was just not the two inches thick as required. Uh, but they didn't do any, the DOT only does sampling of where they do their core tests, and they did their core tests in other spots. But through plowing, when you don't have enough pavement on a new road, <laughs> you very quickly find out if they, uh, if they didn't put enough uh, pavement down. So, um, so they will be uh, repairing that. We also have a couple of uh, potholes near the end, near the loop, that we're going to make them infrared, patch them in infrared uh, repair those particular spots on, on the road because it's a brand new road. So um, so that's the deal. Aside right. from the patches, is that at their expense? So like yes. it wasn't picking up? Okay. No, this is all at their expense. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, we found out before we released all their bond. Well, they still would have a maintenance bond, but before we released everything, yes. So um, curbside collection and removal, transportation and disposal of solid waste recycling materials. There's a very stringent requirements by the state of New Jersey as to when you do different things. Our, our contract expires November uh, 30th, 2018. Um, the specification for the next contractor being uh, re reviewed and worked on right now. Um, the borough normally advertises this the uh, second or third week of March. This allows for a 60-day advertisement period, additional time for potential bid and, and time for contracts and paperwork to be executed. You have to have it done uh, according to the state requirements, you know, several months in advance. So that's why we're starting that in March. Um, I talked about this a little bit, but uh, the DEP has expanded the stormwater regulations, which requires significantly more effort, significant more effort and uh, personnel on the part of the borough. Uh, we've reviewed the rules and regulation. We're going to ensure compliance, but it's just only going to take a lot more uh, personnel. Um, some private property, the engineers, the building department, uh, we, we all, we're all going to have to take a different role for all the stormwater. Um, so we're going we're gonna to do that because we're required, um, and we're pretty serious about our stormwater uh, program. Uh, Kelly and I kind of, uh, uh, she does all the public ed communication and education. Um, I take care of the, the, uh, the DBW end and the, and the actual physical works, and Jeff does some of the engineering involved. And we have a pretty good committee that, that, that meets pretty regularly to make sure that that stuff gets done. Um, but uh, you would agree that it's going to be a little onerous this year. Um, a little bit more, yes. Yeah, so... Um, they also, the DEP also has some new rules requirements relative to the maintenance of the water system, which will also require, surprisingly, more reporting and more work. Um, we're going to have to test every valve. We're going to have to, there, there's a lot of different things. We have to put uh, actual tags on hydrants. There's a lot of things that, uh, that we're going to have to do that it's going to require just more manpower to, to do. Um, the DEP has also determined that the borough will be in need of, uh, to meet the effluent copper and zinc final limitations. Uh, which are which become into effect January 1st, 2019, and that's at our James Drive sewage treatment plant. Um, we're going to uh, require an update to the plant or possibly an update to how we operate that plant to maybe uh, be in compliant. Uh, so Jeff and I are reviewing that process, um, and we have to do we, we have to comply with the requirements, so we're reviewing that at this point. Uh, based upon our initial review, we'd like to see if there's some other alternatives that we can do besides actually amending the plant. Like I said, there could be some... Uh, some ways that they, they currently uh, process uh, the waste differently, which, which may yield different uh, results. So my recommendation would be that we hired uh, Gerard Philemont 
of uh, Lang Engineering to investigate whether the change in operation would be a better plan um, or a structural plan change in the plant so that we can have an engineering plan, we can get a kind of ahead of this so that we have some time to decide how we want to, uh, how we want to approach. Um, he would also review the, uh, the, the copper and zinc issues um, that we that was in the January 1st uh, 2000 uh, the, the, the requirements that would come into effect January 1st 2019 his initial proposal for that is going to be ten thousand dollars I would not like to wait till the next month it's within my spending authority but I wanted to bring it up here anyway to see what you folks thought we should do with that so um, with that mayor I mm -hmm. I don't know if you want me to uh, end because we're at the eight o'clock uh, point or what you'd like me to uh, do. we can give it give it a couple more minutes okay. if you want to go over a couple of things do you want a resolution now regarding the I would ten thousand dollar contract yeah, for review of the James drive wastewater treatment plant yes yep um, I, w I would like that um, if that's possible you I don't want, know what you want the authority to uh, enter into execute Correct. a contract a professional contract on behalf of the borough for some not to exceed ten thousand thousand dollars for the reason stated correct okay. And that's going to help us out. Well, hopefully he will he get will into compliance with NJDEP. Yeah. I, when I met with him, there are some suggestions that he has that may be, um, as you know, our engineer talked about it we, at the last meeting, this could be $300,000 expenditure if we have to amend the plant. So if, if this gentleman has some, some ideas of way we might be able to do it through different, for running our plant differently, um, by all means, let's investigate that. He also, if in fact he, he can't do it that way, is very qualified and, and wastewater can, can help us through whatever type of plant amendment we would have, but that would be a secondary contract down the road. So, okay. And that would be resolution 2018-72? Correct. And the cost would come out of this current year's budget or is there an opportunity to absorb it? I would take this out of, we have a uh, capital for the uh, waste, for the James Drive treatment plant. When anytime there's any leftover funds at the end of the year, generally we run about a $25,000 surplus. We put that into a capital account and we would use that capital account, which is contained within this budget, but for expenditures like this. So I think there's $190,000, $180,000 approximately in there um, for uh, plant enhancements or plant investigations or whatever you might need for that. We have a motion. <clears throat> second. And second. And second. Uh, roll call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davidson? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council member O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. You know, every meeting I, I remind everybody that uh, the DPW is continuing to do projects, fill potholes, and construct berms. And, you know, if you have something that you need to communicate with the DPW, obviously you can call us, but a, a quick response to her is to go on ringwoodnj.net to a report a problem, and you can fill out the forms there, and it goes directly to a work order. Uh, so I encourage all the uh, residents to use that. Uh, the system works very well. Um, so if, if, in fact, you have some issues, by all means, go to that website. Um, <coughs> snow. I'm sure you're all tired of snow. <laughs> I can tell you I'm tired of snow. Um, the 2017-2018, as of February 2018, we had the following events. November, we had one event. December, we had six events, which totaled 13.3 inches of snow. January, we had five events, eight inches of snow. Two of them were ice events. February, uh, we had six events of 9.8 inches of snow, and three were ice events. Um, the unfortunate part about snow is we know it, it costs us approximately $16,000. $450 on average for a snowstorm. Some of them will cost more, some of them cost less, but that's a fact of life. So uh, we, can, we can safely calculate that, that, that so far the snow events for the 17, 18 seasons cost us approximately $300,000. Uh, we've spent approximately, uh, included within that number, $112,000, $113,000 in salt, calcium, and brine. Brine has cut down on our salt, but because we've had so many icing events this year, um, there's just no way around that. The ice is difficult to deal with. Um, so that, that's uh, kind of a snow update. Um, keep going, Mayor. Um, yes, yes, no okay. reason to. You're close to, close to the end? Uh, probably not, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> does that snow total, does that take us through this most recent storm? That's current. Be okay. That's current. The, the storms, we've, we've averaged it out. I didn't give you an actual cost because I didn't break down the labor. But over the years, we've established what we what it costs per storm on average and you know so on average that's what it costs are we running on average this year it's we have we have a lot more average yeah we're probably above average with the ice storms the ice right. has been very difficult i would i would say that uh, half of our problem this year was ice and i know the parents are sometimes a little frustrated but when it rains 
at 28 degrees at five in the morning and it rains over the whole town, you can't get to every street at the same time. There's just no physical way. So um, that's, that's part of the problem. And, and while we have a really good, uh, robust snow plowing effort, uh, you, f you physically can't do that. So, um, you know, so we work on that and sometimes the parents are a little frustrated, but the ice this year has been extremely problematic. The micro scale on my front steps, I can attest to that. I have yeah. <laughs> I have very and as a parent, I can attest to looking out the window and saying, why? And <laughs> not realizing until I walked out the door how much ice was there. Yeah, it, it's, uh, and, and because we have such a diverse elevation throughout town, you could be on one yeah. side of the town and that, fine. that uh, that's fine, and the other side of the town is, is not fine. The other problem that you have sometimes with school delays, and, and um, it's sometimes it's not always road related. Sometimes we've taken care of the roads and the roads are taken care of, but the buses can't get the buses cleared off and the parking lots done before parents and, and buses have to get out on the road. And so there's, there's a lot that goes into mm -hmm. why schools are closed or why they're on delay and, right. and so forth. I always like the kids to go to school because you know the moms call here when they don't go to school. <laughs> And, and rightfully so. So anyway, so we do what we can, but um, there's a lot of different reasons that go into why they close and why they don't close. So, uh, Mayor, the next discussion I want to talk about is um, after we've talked a lot about the meeting room in the municipal building um, over the past uh, several months, um, after reviewing the uh, proposals and, and going through a whole litany of, of items, um, I met with Chief Walker and, and myself, and we talked about the issue, and we, we laid out scenarios where this may work or may not work. Um, and based upon that conversation and based upon everything that we believe we would have to do to, to make a, a non-personnel building a open to the public, uh, we believe that it's not a good idea to use this facility as a public meeting room for, for a whole host of reasons. Security being one, not to mention the physical cost of upgrades of the building. Because remember, there's no, built, there's no employees in this building. Um, There'll be no employees present when you'll be using it for whatever the case may be. Uh, the building is not set up for unrestricted public access, and often uh, the police department use this facility for, for various uh, investigative and departmental needs. There's times they need different rooms for different reasons for police departments, and you know, I don't know that I want to go into all those things, but you know, if, if, you, if you need to separate people bef to interview and to talk to, they use many different rooms at different times. Um, so. If, if, in fact, we were going to do that, Chief would want us to have a security guard here, um, just like they do at the schools now, uh, because there's, no, there's not always employees in the schools as well. Um, so for, that, for, for some of these reasons and, and others, uh, we just don't recommend us using this at this point um, for, uh, for a community room. The library has staff in it, um, and, and, and it works well, and it's centrally located, so um, that would be my recommendation there. Do we know, Don, um, and I'm not suggesting that the borough take on the cost, do we know the hourly cost of a security guard for a few hours meeting? What does I would mean? have to look. I believe that uh, if we're using special police officers, it's maybe $25 an hour. We charge a school, so I would have to, I, I could look and tell you. But, uh, but, but having said that, uh, we found that using a security guard, a, 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 a you know, a special officer is, is far superior to just a security person. No, that makes so. that makes complete sense. So. Um, so then, hypothetically, if the if the CAG in their request was able to fund the special officer, would that then address the lion's share of, of the concerns? Well, coupled with the with the cable TV coverage, if they had wanted to to tape it and get it out, I I suggest that we don't do it. Regardless, based upon there's a lot of different things. There's there's some security issues. There's I I still don't think it's a good idea based upon our discussions with the chief when they need to when they need to. As an example, we have a men's and ladies' room here. If they have to walk a prisoner through, they, they walk here. Now, when there's council meetings, they obviously make other arrangements. But if we're going to open this facility up for um, use as a community meeting room or the, or the courtroom, certainly none of those rooms they would, they would suggest because there's a bathroom outside. Often there's no police officers in the building. It's just dispatchers. Sometimes there's not. So um, I don't think uh, that it's probably a good idea as a, as a general policy anyway. So... I, I just want to add one thing. It hasn't come up. If you open this up, if you designate this as a community room, this is a community room to all groups. You cannot discriminate. And you're going to have to have a very detailed protocol, like the library does, all kind of rules and regulations uh, controlling it. But if we, if we designate this a form, then it's a form for everybody that meets, a certain, uh, that meets whatever our protocol is going to be. That's, 
that's something. So it's just not, we're not talking about one group. We can be talking about many groups. Uh, there'll be scheduling issues in that. Uh, I just wanted to let, let you know that, that that is a constitutional requirement, okay? That we cannot discriminate among users as long as they meet our protocol, okay? And what the council asked me to do is look at, at this as a community room in general for whatever particular group might, you know, might be looking to use it. So that basis is what, what we base it upon, so. I guess my only question is, <clears throat> for 10 years, the CAG did meet here on a regular basis. Um, this was something that was never an issue or a problem. And I went to the last CAG meeting at the library, I guess it was February? The 8th. The 8th. And there was a lot of information. I think Terry from the EPA, the technical advisor, was there. She was very informative. There were a lot of questions that the public asked. And I fear that this information isn't being disseminated throughout the community. And I think it's important that it is. So if it's, whether it's here or if it's at the library, is there a way that we can get public or community input and dissemination of what's going on there to well, we the public? We certainly, th there's a process by which, th th you know, the CAG for years has videotaped their meetings for, for years. Uh, you know, uh, Rich Spiegel always videotaped from the back constantly. They always had the videotape going. They could submit those things to us at cable TV and we can play them on channel 77. Uh, mm -hmm. but, to, but when Rich Spiegel was here, there probably wasn't a meeting that wasn't videotaped. So absolutely. I mean, there's ways that that can, that can happen. Um, and it, uh, he put it on his website often, I think. I, I'd have to go back and look. I've never but. seen them on. However, I do know that they were here for 10 years without an issue, and all of a sudden it is an issue, which is surprising to me, yeah. quite frankly. Well, it, 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 it was an issue for the CAG, who moved their meeting to the library. Right. And then, and then when the problem came that the library had standards to meet in their room, the question becomes, why don't we have those standards? What's, what's, what's wrong with us? We're, we're, we're doing something wrong. Um, so this is an attempt to try to fix and rectify what was, you know, what, what was a, a, a previous, it's not necessarily a mistake, but you can definitely tighten up your own procedures and protocols. We, it, it turns out that we were, uh, in essence, allowing anybody to use the room at, at will without any kind, of, uh, any kind of protocols or procedures and policies to follow. So that that we that we're going to rectify one way or the other. We have to get that we have to get that fixed. And Mayor, when they what what started the discussion back and forth was um, the CAG had gone to the library and they, I guess the library asked for insurance and there was some debate back and forth and and they called us and said, well, would you require insurance? And what was the com whole conversation? And we contacted our insurance company and said, okay, here you here here's mm -hmm. the scenario. And they said, oh, no, that would not fall under your umbrella. They would not be covered for insurance here based upon them not being in your control. And, not, you know, so that's kind of what stimulated the discussion. And then from there, the, all of you as a group asked me to look into a policy for community room. And so based on that, we've, we've talked for quite a few months <coughs> with the attorneys. We've met, talked to the insurance company. I talked to the personnel. I talked to the court because, remember, there's court here a couple of days uh, a month as well that occupies the whole building. And... Um, we have meetings here, planning board, board of adjustment. There's not a lot of time available um, for for this to be a meeting room as it is. So, um, you know, from a constitutional perspective, because um, I, from what I understand, I'm going to fail on the organization. I don't know if it's Sierra Club, but they they do have their um, liability insurance in, in order. But from an access perspective, because I I agree, it's not necessarily. Um, you know, appropriate to, to open this up to the entire community. I think community room is uh, is a stretch, and I don't think that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, but would there be an opportunity um, similar to the way that the various committees and, and groups that the council sponsors to bring this to some extent uh, under the fold of the Superfund Committee or under that umbrella in general with like a, a specific mission of bringing in community input and, and providing it to both the borough and the EPA so that there is that, you know, clear mandate that, A, they have from the EPA, but then also from, from the council to take some of the, the contention off the table in terms of opening a Pandora's box. That's for you folks to decide. And I agree. Um, I'd have to, I have to, I have to look into that. 
Yeah, because we're talking yeah. about government entities that are involved in these meetings. We have the EPA, we have the DEP. We have a number of um, government entities that do participate and comment during these meetings that I've observed by attending them. So it wouldn't be your regular Girl Scout you know, meeting see, or Boy Scout meeting? Uh, you raised a point that was raised in other cases. You know, it, uh, the CAG is important, we, obviously important. Obviously. But it's, it's a matter of, of metrics. Other groups will say, well, we're important too. And you know, and how, yeah, do, you, how do you gauge? Mm -hmm. How do you gauge it? Uh, that's the problem. Uh, there, there's no, you know, re reading the, uh, these are First Amendment cases, freedom of expression, reading those, mm -hmm. the, the, there's, there's not, you, you can't distinguish uh, in importance uh, between one, one group uh, and another. But if you're saying can, we, can, can that CAG somehow be a part of the municipal arm, that means what you're, you're, you're asking. Uh, to to be given some to, municipal mandate to an extent. Um, I'm looking for we can't cover any insurance unless, the, like the, uh, the the boards and commissions are part and parcel of this government. They're part and you know they're advisory groups to you. They're whatever the case may be. Well, they're, they're formed they're, by ordinances. They're they're, formed, they're, they're, they're they're staffed by, or they're they're populated by people that that we select. It's a, it's a different animal altogether. Right. So the good news is that the library is is worked out, and uh, as a matter of fact, I've kind of paid attention. Um, they were done by 8.30, uh, so the hours really aren't as issue. And I noticed that people started to leave. I, I, I kind of tracked at the last meeting there was public there. There was quite a few residents there, um, some people outside of, of the borough, obviously, as well. And by 7.30, 8 o'clock, there were people that were starting to already leave. So I, I didn't bring my notes with me. but um, So I think they were done by 8.30 at, yeah. at, at the last meeting. So. Uh, um, as long as they're they're over there and they it, and it's a great facility and it's easy access and um, it's it's staffed at night and it was designed for that purpose I I think that that's probably a, a good solution and if in fact uh, they want to videotape we can you know we can we can follow the process by which we can play it on channel 77 okay as far as easy access the only thing I would uh, reiterate is that Vivian had brought it to our attention that for the community right here the bar hall was a better location that's something Vivian did bring to our attention. I just want to be her voice and, this and evening. In, <laughs> and in general, I will say it's, uh, it was almost disorienting for it to end early because I don't know that I've ever been. Yeah, really, long. right? <laughs> but it did work out this this most recent time. Um, and to clarify, I'm not, you know, from a visual standpoint, if we think about it as an org chart, it wouldn't be a solid line in my mind. It would be like a dotted uh, reporting line. It's not something that I think we need to appoint members, uh, et cetera, but to have a, a specific mission to fulfill for the borough, and that being to, you know, provide input on a specific topic. Yeah, we should. We, I don't. I, I don't quite get that. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know what. 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 And I don't know if I want to have the discussion at the moment. Yeah, um, we don't. We don't have to. You know, I, I, we can take sorry, Mayor. I only brought up my report because I was following up for you guys <laughs> trying to get back to you based upon uh, the last meeting. So, um, uh, with that, Mayor, I, I have other things, but uh, the next thing that I have is the turf field. If you would like to segue into, uh, I know there's some residents here that yes, are interested yes, in what we're talking good, about. Um, um, okay, uh, so we will uh, uh, hold off on the remainder of your manager's report. Do you have? Uh, do you want to? Do you want to? Start the start the conversation on. Uh, sure, if, if that's what you'd like year. me to do. Yes. Um, by way of background, um, we've been talking about turf field for quite a few years. As a matter of fact, we applied for Passaic County grants in 2014, 15, and 16, mm -hmm. uh, which we were successful at getting uh, for a turf field at Hewitt School. Um, the first map over there to the left is the original plans for Hewitt School, which we were going to put a walking track and lights, and, and we picked Hewitt School for quite a few reasons um, the the number one it's on a school property so it's exempt from the Highlands uh, from the Highlands bill for a turf field um, it we have an existing field there already uh, the children use the uh, the grass and whatnot during playground time and uh, we thought that that would be an appropriate place there's no neighbors um, so the, the impact of the facility would be minimal to you know basically people driving by the the, the closest uh, resident uh, the closest building is the church, quite a bit away from it. So we thought that that was naturally the best idea. 
Um, unfortunately, the DEP doesn't necessarily believe that that's the best idea because they believe that there's some streams and 300 foot buffers and, and some riparian zones that are on that piece of property. Uh, even though that there's an existing soccer field and a half now that we use, they feel that uh, you know just because it's existing now doesn't mean that you can upgrade it to a turf field, that would be a significant change. So while they haven't said no, um, for the last two years we've downgraded, we've changed our plans, we've tried to minimize the scale we're going a little bit beyond the tree line that's there exist, uh, existing. Um, they have made it clear that that's not uh, likely to get approval. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of a little bit of a history. Um, with that in mind, uh, because of some of these hurdles, we, we, we it became clear to us that we need to find a different location. Um, so with that in mind, we went to Stonetown Complex. Um, putting a turf field at the lower Stonetown Field Complex, uh, however, um, the Stonetown ball field doesn't have lighting. Lighting is not allowed there without going back to a planning board. So uh, we, what we did is we did notification for everybody within 200 feet so that they knew kind of what we were talking about at the early stages of a grant. Uh, by no means do we have a design or a sketch or anything at this point. But essentially, um, Mayor, if you want me to get up there, I can kind of show people what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, would you, if you would. I'll take with me. They might, actually, you might not be able to hear me if I'm over there. But, um, <coughs> Essentially, uh, this is the Stonetown ball field here. This is the property line for the uh, residents in the back. The, here. I, I kind of had our engineer put on the lot and block of the tax map at the same scale. Um, so this is the softball field over here. Um, this, is, this is the playground for the, for the children. Um, the lower field here is what we're talking about putting a, uh, a, a turf field in. Uh, this is the one that sits a little lower than the, uh, the upper field. And there's another baseball, a softball field over here. So we're talking about putting, taking the existing field, which we might have to move the fence slightly, but going to the tree line in this particular area and putting lighting for, uh, for this particular turf field um, in the center, of the, in center of, the, uh, of the facility. And we would be increasing the parking in the middle here. That right now it's grass in the middle of the parking. Sometimes we have trouble on Stonetown Road where we have events where they park out on, on Stonetown Road. And it's mainly when they're changing from, um, I'm sorry, John, I didn't know that you can't see that. I'm, I'm good, Scott. I, I <laughs> the parking issue is mainly no when there's heart. a big event where they're changing, you know, when you have the softball, softball, and, and, and soccer going on at the same time, and you're changing teams. And that seems to be where the, the problems occur. Uh, we can add approximately another 60 parking spaces in through here, which might mitigate some of that. We don't believe it's going to be any more intensive of a use. The difference is you'll be able to play later, and you'll be able to play, like right now, if, if we get rain, that those fields aren't used for a couple days because you can't possibly uh, uh, run out of them because it's so, it's so muddy. So that's what we're talking about right now, and this is one of the options. Um, Lighting-wise, we don't have a lighting uh, plan. We haven't really done that yet. Um, there is a lot of new technology in lighting. Um, for those of you who didn't take a look at this, this, this is just a little bit about uh, uh, the lighting company that, uh, that everyone's using for turf fields these days. They can really control the type of lights. In the beginning, you used to see lights where they were just these stanchions up in the middle and they were just cascading light wherever they want to go. And they've now graduated from 1977 when they just had that cascading light to really, really controlled lighting. Um, so you can see in this, in this over here where it just hits whatever area they want to hit. That doesn't mean that there's not a little bit of a glow from there. And uh, I know that's what the residents' concern are and, and I understand those concerns. So there's ways that they can they can really control those lights with hoods and hats so that it doesn't gravitate. Yeah, before it just used to cascade anywhere they wanted to go. Well, lights are not like that anymore. Um, with the with the advent of hoods and LEDs, they can really kind of uh, control that that type of that type of lighting. Um, so that's just some basic talks about lighting. Um, so this would essentially be in the center of the field. I don't know where anybody lives. Here's 67 Pinewood Drive. Is anybody here from that particular property or no? I'm 79 right near. You're 79, so you're a couple doors away. Okay. Um, this probably is lower in elevation, this particular property, than this field. Um, and we could, I think, we'd have to talk to the lighting company. They might be able to put the lights on this side and this side, so it's kind of coming away from the residents. As long as they can light the whole field appropriately, that, uh, that's a way that they, that they possibly can do that. The resident here uh, I met with uh, on the weekend 
And I, you probably have the most vantage point of seeing into this field. I think when I looked, I drove up and down the street and I kind of looked, you probably have the most visibility from, from where you are because you're on, you're on the same elevation. Um, so these are things that, uh, that we, we would have to talk about. Originally we talked about walking tracks and that kind of stuff and I think that we could do that kind of stuff but not knowing whether we could include it within a tree line, whether it would, whether it would impact the buffers. I didn't include it in the grant and application that's before you this evening um, because I thought, you know what, we really need a turf. Walking tracks would be great if, in fact, we could do that. But before we get down that road, we need to get some design standards in. So I didn't include that aspect actually in the grant application that Danny and I have been working on for the last day or so. I felt like if, in fact, we went to the planning board and we decided that that was a good idea and we got input from the residents, we could always add that. You know? So um, our main goal is, is to get this. Uh, underway in some capacity. So those are the uh, briefly the uh, things that we're talking about grants for. Um, I do want to add one more aspect that I've talked to the mayor and council about. So the the grant that we're talking about uh, asking for, we think that the expenditure is going to be about a hundred uh, one point eight million dollars. We have uh, uh, nine hundred thousand dollars of our own funds. We would have to reapply, Passaic County. Um, let, me get the, let me get the numbers actually out here, Kelly. We had uh, four hundred fifty-seven thousand five hundred dollars in the past grants that they have agreed for uh, Stonetown Ballfield. Now, we can't. Uh, excuse me for uh, Hewitt Field. We can't transfer those, but I would apply for those and an additional two hundred fifty thousand or seven hundred seven thousand five hundred dollars for a grant from Passaic County Open Space and add that to the $900,000 that we already have in existence for the commitment on our portion for the 14, 15, and 16 that's already funded. We already have that those funds set aside um, to put towards this. Um, so what we really need to decide is do we have a deadline on, on the grant. Do we want to apply for a grant for Stonetown Bowlfield this year for that particular or something similar to that? Obviously, the details would come after you do the, the designs. Um, there's another alternative, uh, and I've talked about this uh, to, to the mayor and council before. We can also, instead of uh, we, when I talk to the open space, when I talk to Recreation Commission, and quite frankly, when I've talked to each one of you individually, uh, we haven't really talked about it a lot as a, as a whole council. Uh, the preference was Stonetown would be our first priority, Lakeland would be our second priority. Um, we cannot get a grant for Lakeland High School because it's not in our community, even though it's our kids and I think we have 55% or 54% of the, of the uh, student population um, and, the, and the expense. Um, so the other recommendation or the other option would be if, if you do not want to go through this process, you want to go through a planning board hearing and apply for a grant next year, you could continue to work with Lakeland on a shared service uh, turf field at Lakeland High School. I think it's going to be in the $600,000 range, but we would be sharing it with them. We wouldn't have, it wouldn't be in our community. They already have parking, they already have lights, they already have grandstands. Um, that's another alternative uh, as well as, as, I don't think that one field is going to solve our, our needs. Um, I think that you're going to need to ultimately anyway, because uh, the, the lacrosse and the soccer uh, and the are, are growing in leaps and bounds. I think soccer has 500 <coughs> students in it. Um, lacrosse probably has that many. Uh, football isn't as much in numbers, but um, but all these programs require um, a facility. And, uh, and I also think that the costs associated with maintaining the grass when they get no rest time is impossible. Sooner or later, we, we can't turn we can't take a field down because if we do for maintenance, the kids have nowhere to play. So um, ultimately, you're going to need more than one. So you have you have a couple different options. Um, I will tell you that uh, everybody that I've spoken to prefers. Um, an in, an in town field as opposed to Lakeland because they're concerned about, you know, pushing and pulling of, of who gets what time. Of course, that would all be designated by a contract. We have a contract with the school as to who gets what time exactly. Um, although that's somewhat difficult to administer at times, but I think it's I think it's certainly doable. I think uh, we've met with with Lakeland as well. So <coughs> all of the options work. I wanted to present them all to you. Uh, unfortunately, if we're going to apply for a grant, um, Kelly and I really need to know today. Um, because we don't have another council meeting for a couple of weeks. And just because you ask for a grant, as an example, 14, 15, and 16, we, we have a grant. We haven't been able to 
uh, perfect the, the grant because we haven't started construction. Um, I will tell you that Say County has a two-year window for um, actual getting the grant and, and constructing. So, I mean, we might be able to get some waivers, we might be able to get some extensions, but we'd have to have shown some really significant progress. And uh, with Hewitt School, we haven't been able to do that. So, um, so that's kind of the status as a brief update. Mm -hmm. well, so, I, my opinion is that we move forward with Stonetown Fields. I don't. Uh, oh, excuse me, do you want to conduct the public Yeah, I think hearing? we have some yeah. people yeah. here. Yes. Yeah, or do you want to open it to the public right now, or we can go, you want to go around the table once, and then we can, oh. then we can open it to the public? All right, let's do that. Um, There's more to it. You. It's just that's the money at Lakeland, and really not feeling secure about the amount of time our kids uh, <coughs> can play in that field. I'm just not because there's so much so much <laughs> stuff going on at Lakeland. Uh, it sounds like a good idea, but um, you know, I'm told that they have hard enough, hard enough time now when they call them to try to uh, use their fields uh, once in a while. And I'm not sure how this thing would work. Yeah, I'm sorry, you know, I think before you offer your opinions, you should hear, you should hear it from Mr. Heck, you should hear from the public and then Offer your various opinions uh, after you hear what the folks of the public have to say. That's uh, that's how the hearing process normally works. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Can we, can, okay. Does that include questions in advance, even without no. our opinion? No, or no you can certainly ask yeah, questions. Ask questions, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, before you you're ready to offer proper your final opinions and take your vote, you should hear what the we should hear from the neighbors. So, in terms of the application and the resolution i think one of the things that we had talked about previously was obviously risks with lakeland but the advantage of having a plan b in case we ran into any uh unsurmountable you know challenges with with <coughs> plan a being stonetown complex um so that essentially we don't have to give the money back and you know uh, pivot afterwards did we get anything that told us that for some reason we weren't able to do that or not allowed we can't uh, uh, we can't use uh, the, the funds from Passaic County Open Space for the field at Lakeland. So the only viable option that we have would be either Hewitt School or Stonetown Ball Field. We have no other viable option. Okay, so um, it was just never going to be. It was. It turned out to not be a Plan B. Like we. We were hoping that we could, since we control the majority of that school and that our student and it's a regional high school. Uh, we had hoped that we could transfer i'm not allowed to use the word transfer because they don't do that we w w apply for lakeland high school um they said that that would not be uh, viewed favorably um so then i don't know that there's any viable location with uh with hewitt but should we list that just so that if we had any challenges here we could again pivot within the borough the way i wrote the resolution um or i shouldn't say i we wrote the resolution was somewhat um unusual in that I said we uh, you know I think we said something like I understand that uh, let, me, let me read it actually um, we understand that while Ringwood is not desirous of canceling the previous grant award we understand that a requirement of any new grant would be that we have to cancel it so in other words we don't I don't really want to stand up here and say we're going to cancel the grant I'd rather them say okay we kind of get it if you're going to we're going to keep this if they can keep this grant here while we're applying for the total funds over here that way we haven't given up any of those rights but you know look they've they've made it pretty clear that <coughs> you know two years is their limit and they've we've already been 14 15 and 16 so I think uh, you know based upon the circumstances we find ourselves in that you know we're in the Highlands and we have a little bit more onerous requirements than some of the other uh, communities may have that I think uh, you know they may be a little bit uh, flexible but uh, we can't you know, we, we can't hold it any more than that. Um, so then in terms of what we're specifying would go in at, at Stonetown, um, so fully understand the challenges with the perimeter, I'll call it, regarding the walking track. Is it any more onerous or obligatory to include it in the application? And then if something in the site specs comes back where we wouldn't be able to do it to take it out, I'm, I would just always think to start with more and then 
narrow down. Well, they're not, they're, they're not applying. We're not applying for a grant for the total amount that it would do over and above anyway. They're not going to fund any more or less because there's a walking track. Historically, like the first year we got 200 and I think 89,000. Um, and then the second year we got, we got, you know, we got less each, each year. So, um, it's not normal for them to give those kind of awards. So I thought 250,000 was a, was a, a reasonable ask for this year. It doesn't get us to covering the cost. So whether we add the walking trail or we don't walk, add the walking trail on the grant application, we're going to have to ultimately fund it anyway. So I thought it could follow the normal planning process, and then we can decide through design if that's what we really wanted to do. Doesn't make our grant application any more attractive, or doesn't doesn't attach any additional dollars to it. If we if we if we start throwing bells and whistles on it, you know, we, the state county is going to look at it the same way. Okay. Just like I didn't incre I didn't add increasing the the playground to add whatever swings or whatever whatever the case may be um, I didn't put that in the application either I was really focused on we're looking for a turf field we're looking for drainage and we're looking for lights um, and whatever associated equipment comes with that particular uh, activity and again, and I'm, okay so speaking of lights and then I had only one other question after that so um, in terms of the light options and the impact on residents is there any benefit to, and I don't know the proper term for it, but some of the netting, like the black netting that you can see sort of uh, around field boundaries? I don't know if it's intended for visual disruption or balls, but uh, is there any type of netting that could be uh, installed along with the lights as a secondary? Netting is generally for capturing foul balls and, and whatnot. Uh, it's not really, it doesn't do anything um, for any visual barrier of any kind. Um, what, what I would encourage us to do is not take down any of the trees and not, not widen out anywhere. You know, the, the existing tree line is the existing tree line. And if, if nothing else, let's, let's beef that up. Let's put some evergreens in. Let's do some other things to try and in areas where you need to help the residents to try and shield whatever noise or activity. And I mean, the noise or activity is there now, but it will be more so in the evening if say you you have games until nine o'clock at night that you know you, there's there's you know that 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 voices will carry from what you normally have at six o'clock in in september till possibly nine o'clock so um and then in terms of bells and whistles and doing whatever we can to make sure that you know hypothetically we don't have to give this money back if we encounter any sort of site issues that serve as a barrier would we be able to include the playground not only at that site but throughout the borough because you know as i recall open space funds can be used for playground enhancements so that if anything were to go sideways with the field itself we have that plan b already in place where we could funnel those funds to, to i don't i don't think we're going to be able to put in options a b and c for for funding and that would require a second application and they're not going to do two and and, and i think this is the most funding that we're going to get if and this is probably uh, i think the last one was 99,000 kelly 77 70, 70 so i you know i don't think we're going to be able to get to that point um if you want to apply for playgrounds you can do that this year in, in total um or or you can or you can do this you know the, the approach we're taking is the previously granted four hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars from state county open space um where state county says well those are have to be seeded we have to walk away from those we want them to roll that into a different turf project we just want to just want to take them from right up here and shift them over into stone town so it will be a new grant for a turf field it will be but it'll be turf you know the the the, the theme is turf uh, to add playgrounds and stuff might be a little you know uh a little shell gameish. You know, we're starting to move things around a little bit. We're moving location because <coughs> we must, because we fought that fight. We have not fought it to the bitter end, uh, but the bitter end's visible. You know, we're going to get a field there. They might let us have a field that would be undersized for our actual needs, and they'll and they'll and they'll deign to grant us that as far as the land use permitting people go. And that's not going to meet. That's not going to satisfy the the need we have. So uh, we we the if. If it's turf we want, we want to, you know, tell State County we're taking this turf. We appreciate your your earlier funding of this project. We need to move this project over here because DEP has has provided a roadblock that we it's insurmountable. You know, I don't want to add 
I don't want to add the other stuff on it yet. You know, yeah. once we nail it down, if we nail this grant down, then yeah, we we should be looking at at, at playgrounds one more time. That would be a great next. Yeah, those other grant. things should be brought to open space committee. Uh, yeah, we can fund it. We can fund it in house. You know, we can look at that. It's yeah. no secret that in the budget meeting I talked about replacing every playground we have because insurance reasons and 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 they're declining and they need you know they need significant upgrades. But um, I think that that's uh, I think it's a it's a choice which but you folks have to make. And I wasn't looking to prioritize playgrounds over turf. I was just thinking yeah. if turf is at the core and you have these appendages, if you will, added on. Yeah something goes wrong with the core, you know, I don't know if the DEP has already right. greenlit this or, you know, so that, that dies on the table. We still have these appendages that need money that we can funnel it to without having to go back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. And I would, and if we weren't trying to shift this previously granted money over into this project, uh, yeah, I would say you make this for the Stone Town Recreation Project you know, overhaul or some kind of reconstruction, redevelopment, where we're doing everything, you know, and, and then throw everything into it, fencing, fencing pathways, uh, parking, uh, access, uh, you know, more, 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 a little bit more asphalt to get access up and into their playgrounds, the whole bit, we would put that on there. Uh, but in this case, uh, you know, we're kind of asking them to, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're asking them to move previously granted funds over into this project don't want to don't want to confuse the matter you know much, much further than it than it is confusing and, and confused well and i think we've been successful at three different grants uh kelly and i kind of labor over writing these to try and uh, they all the grants that i reviewed they don't have these various um like it, it's the stone down ball field it's hewitt school it's it it's not uh, multiple uh sites like that i mean those would have to be all separate they would grants. all have to be separate applications because they're separate lot and blocks they're or separate, separate addresses and different um, notification different it's right. they're all separate like we had to we we can't possibly apply for anything except for stone town ball field uh this year because as a requirement we had to notify the public within 200 feet we sent everybody certified mail we did not notify anybody else other than than that so for this year we couldn't change that location off of that anyway so it's either we we stay where we are or we or we go to stone down ball field for this particular round doesn't mean you can't change it for next year but we already sent out all the notifications mm -hmm. and with that maybe we should hear from the public yeah, to I see what they're oh well i'm just trying to give them a chance <laughs> <laughs> um and then just one last question to understand sorry um so then even just focusing on stone town if we include the playground as part of like the overall site then again, if anything were to happen with the turf portion, would the grant allow us to proceed with fixing the, okay, Kelly's shaking her head. So. When you describe the project, the project's gonna, like, project you can't, you can't turf. take pieces out of the project and they'll either approve it or they're not gonna approve it. Right. And, you know, we can't approve it, but, and we can do this portion or this portion or this portion, it, it, they don't really work that way. Like, we don't have this money physically, they don't give it to you until you've met all those hurdles. So it's not like we have to give money back. They won't give it to you until you've gotten your permits for the application based upon what you presented. Gotcha. So if so. the DEP, for whatever reason, killed the turf portion of it, it's not as though we could use the grant to install lights we'll be in, to expand. Be a new grant. Fields that are there. Okay. Yeah, it'd be a new grant. All right. Okay. Um, all right. At this uh, at this point, I uh, would like to open up uh, the subject to the public. This is uh, resolution 2018-57. Uh, authorizing a grant application to Passaic County Open Space uh, Farmland Historical Preservation Trust Fund for park development at Stonetown Recreational Complex. Um, if anybody would like to speak on the matter, uh, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, um, and let us know what you think. <laughs> yeah, short straw. Okay. Uh, my name's Ed Goldman. I'm at 79 Pinewood Drive. Um, I have a few things. First, I'd like to address what Mr. Heck was saying about the lighting. Yes, it's true that we're lower, but I've never been up at the sports field at night, but I'm assuming that the light that's on there is near Stonetown Road, yes? 
It's by the snack stand. Okay, so that shines into my backyard. So to give you a sense of, you know, what, what I'm anticipating may be directed or not, I don't want to minimize the, you know, un until I see it. I mean, if I, if you put up a light there and show me that it doesn't shine on my house, then I'd be a little bit more, you know, less reluctant to uh I will tell you that the light that's there that. is, is more of a, a, a low sodium light that just cascades light out. Right. The light guy, you're right. The light guy would have to tell you all that. I'm not a light expert by any. By okay. Any. No, I just wanted to point out yeah. that lighting may be an issue sure. yeah. at this point because we're speculating what, what that direction of light does. Um, I think I think I'm representing mo it, it, some, if not most, of the questions, which would be, first of all, is this going to, are these changes going to increase the volume of activity and the length of the activity in the, for, the, for the amount of time in the daytime and the length through the season? Because we're already experiencing a certain amount of the sound of joy, which is fine, you know, but, but if it's going to, if it's